Hello all. In this session, we will be discussing the carbon footprint. So whether it is called ecological footprint, environmental footprint or carbon footprint. Don't confuse about it. Okay. So we will discuss all about it in this session. First to start with. So what exactly is carbon footprint? Okay. So we as a human being or for that fact, any animal. So we require some energy, right? Some resources that we consume and which are emitting the greenhouse gases, GHGs, right? So whether it can be the carbon dioxide, whether it can be methane, nitrous oxides. So these are the greenhouse gases which are emitted due to our activities, right? So the carbon footprint talks about the total greenhouse gas emissions caused directly or indirectly by the individual organization, event or product, right? So these emissions can be from the product let's say if we talk about its complete life cycle so life cycle means from grave from cradle to grave means when product is let's say the raw materials are extracted then it's manufactured then it's assembled then it's shipped used discarded and it's end of life so this complete cycle complete uh, life cycle is considered and accordingly how how much are the emissions that are caused by this product or if we talk about as we are human beings as person so we also consume a lot of energy a lot of resources so how much emissions are consumed how much emissions are emitted due to the activities so that are reflected in this carbon footprint so what are the carbon footprint so to calculate this so how much we are emitting right so it is included all the majorly four categories first is about food our food habits what kind of food we eat second about the travel the commute third is about the household so which kind of house we have what are the amenities we are using how energy efficient uh, the overall house is and the fourth is about lifestyle how we consume the resources with the help of the questionnaire uh, these uh, with the help of questionnaire uh, the calculators get the data about our consumption and then they have the record of the national average and they tell us how it compares with the national average and world average okay so that is one common feature for most of the carbon footprint calculators and how it is represented how it is calculated so generally as there are different greenhouse gases but carbon dioxide is chosen as the representation okay so everything is converted into the carbon dioxide and it is represented in mass of co2 equivalent okay so generally it is expressed in terms of tons of co2 equivalent co2 and small e to tell you about this tons so whenever you see tons so there are two tons okay first is about the imperial system of weights and measures which is the british system and which is equivalent to 2 to 4 zero pounds and if we convert it to the kgs it is around 1016 kilograms and second system is the metric system which is equivalent to the 1000 kgs or 10 raised to 6 grams so this is the second thing the metric system that is used in this tons of co2 equivalent so let's see some of the examples of this footprint calculators so these are the calculators so let's say wwf world wildlife fund for nature so there is one second is global footprint network and we have already discussed these two calculators in detail in our previous videos so you can watch this video right now the link is given in the description as well and at the top right now and there are some other calculators as well like carbonfootprint.com and the coolclimate.org so you can see there are multiple options and i have also given them into the description so you can go through it okay so let's talk about what are the limitations of these methods so first limitation is that most of the calculators are region specific like WWF calculator is more specific for the UK residents. Many of the calculators are for the US residents. So it becomes difficult for the people from other part of the world. Okay. And this calculator doesn't cover all the points. Some points are taken for granted. So they are just taken from average data. So it doesn't cover all the points. And there are some issues of accuracy as well. But still these calculators are useful. Why? Because they will tell you approximately from which sector, from which factors your carbon footprint is higher. And accordingly, you can work on that factors, right? So 
the numerical accuracy is not that much important as i feel because whether that is let's say 9 or 10 grams okay it doesn't matter that much because if you are committed if you understand and if you are committed to reduce that and if you reduce that then it's great right so please use it and we will also see what we can do okay but before that one common feature from all these calculators is carbon offsetting so you can buy some carbon credits so what it includes so whenever you buy this carbon footprint or carbon offsetting so you are funding to the projects which are working on like uh, trees plantation the forestation the biodiversity conservation the education jobs clean water or health and well being of the people so these are the projects which are funded with this money okay so there are many options that you can see on this calculator either they will take you to uh, some projects or they will take you directly for the funding so where you can directly donate some money or they will take you to some carbon offsetting options like certified emission reductions crs or gold standard crs or gold standard verified emission reductions vers or verified carbon standards vcs so these are the different carbon credits or carbon offsetting options that you can go for but before going that i am suggesting that don't buy the carbon credit directly okay because we don't know how how much efficient they are okay so whether that money is being spent on the right project uh, or not so it's always better you can contribute but there is some method and that we will discuss so what we should do okay so first thing that i will suggest is understand all the concepts understand from where your footprint is coming completely thoroughly you should be clear about where your footprint is coming what are its impact and as in sustainability we talk about three pillars or even five pillars the ecological the economical and the social so everything is related interdependent on each other so try to understand this in the whole picture then understand where you need to improve which is the factor that is contributing most in your carbon footprint try to reduce that and then you can help economically by the by buying the carbon credits so if and why i'm saying that let's say today you are very motivated you calculated your footprint and you are buying some offsets or carbon credits it's good but you will do it for only one time or two time at the most but if you understand all these concepts if you are committed to improve in your daily life unless and until you improve the long term results won't be there right so first take any one area work on it for at least 6 month or 1 year then you will be more committed for this and at that point of time you will also know which are the projects that you need to support how best you can help to reduce the carbon footprint then if if you need if you think that is okay go help economically it's absolutely required but it should be the next phase next step so that it will be truly sustainable right so that's just one small suggestion from my side do let me know what do you think about this video whether it is helpful or not and what is your footprint if you have calculated please go and calculate your footprint so that you will understand it in a better way and do comment your views as well also i think it's our responsibility to spread awareness about this important topic so do share this video with your friends start the conversation about the footprint so that we will have the well informed community and at the last thank you so much for your valuable time i hope this was helpful for you let's meet in the next video thank you have a great day